Hi, I'm Scarlett. I'm an engineering student at MIT. Every day I study and analyze systems that rely on electronics and electronic components to function. Take your phone, for example. Everything in your phone relies on circuitry, a complex arrangement of transistors, diodes, capacitors, and a whole laundry list of other components. The resistor is the most basic and fundamental electrical component. The laws governing a resistor are simple, and you can even sum up complex networks into a resistor connected to a battery. Resistance is an important part of everyday life. If it runs on electricity, it needs the correct resistance. Having the correct resistance is even important to light bulbs. Too much resistance, and they're dim. Too little, and they flash and burn out. Thomas Edison went through about a thousand different filaments looking for one that both lit up and had the correct resistance. Even batteries have some internal resistance. This AAA battery has a potential difference of 1.5 volts across its terminals. According to Ohm's law, it should be able to put an infinite current through a plain wire. But in reality, it only puts out about 15 amps. This is because a cheap battery like this has a significant internal resistance. Stuff goes wrong when resistance gets ignored. Sometimes nothing happens, sometimes your project lights on fire, sometimes your project lights you on fire. So we need to pay attention to resistance, and we need to be precise about it. But how do we do that? In order to do anything with resistance, we first need to be able to measure it precisely. The Wheatstone Bridge is a great measurement system. It's an arrangement of known resistors used to measure an unknown resistance. It's a great system because it minimizes the error in the measurement. Let's look at how to measure resistance using a Wheatstone Bridge. First, we can try measuring the current through a resistor connected to a battery. If we know the voltage of the battery, say 9 volts, we can measure the current through the resistor and calculate the resistance with Ohm's law. If we measure 3.0 amps, we know we have a 3 ohm resistor. There's a problem with this approach though. To find it, let's take a look at the current we're measuring. With our 9 volt battery setup, we can plot the current we'll measure as a function of the resistance of our resistor. Based on Ohm's law, it'll look like this. With any measurement device, we'll have a little bit of error in the measurement. If the actual current is here, we might measure a current anywhere between these two points. With a small unknown resistance, that won't translate to much error, but we can't count on that. If our resistance is large, we'll measure a small current, which could be anywhere in this range. As you can see, that translates to a big resistance range and we could generate a gigantic error margin. Worse, even if we know the resistance is small, the 9 volt battery's own internal resistance will no longer be negligible. This will throw off our current measurement, even in the smaller ranges, so we can't rely on our measurement for any range of resistances. With that kind of measurement, it's no wonder Edison had to go through a thousand different filaments. Let's try this again, but with the Wheatstone Bridge. The purpose behind the design of the Wheatstone Bridge is precision, but where does that precision come from? We can figure that out based on the graph of what we're measuring for our new setup. With a Wheatstone Bridge, we'll arrange three resistors of known resistance, like so, and the unknown resistance will go here. Our battery will be connected across two terminals, and we'll take a voltage measurement across the other two terminals. With the battery connected, we'll get a voltage at each of these terminals that will depend on the ratio of the resistors on either side, and the voltmeter will show us the difference between the two. Now we can see what the Wheatstone Bridge gets us. If we plot the voltage we'll measure as a function of the actual voltage, we get a linear relationship. If we measure a small difference, we'll create only a small error. If we measure a large difference, we still create only a small error. Compare these errors to the ones we were generating with our current measurement earlier. See how much better the Wheatstone Bridge is? This improvement is why Wheatstone Bridges are used for measuring resistance.
Now that we know why to use a Wheatstone bridge, let's actually calculate how to use it. For convenience, we'll ground the negative terminal of the battery, so we can know that the positive terminal is at voltage VB. Because each of the two branches in the Wheatstone bridge has the same voltage drop applied to them, each can be examined separately. We'll start by redrawing the left side. The left side consists of a set of resistors in series, so we can redraw the left side as a single resistor. The resistance of this branch is the sum of our two series resistors, R1 and R3. We know the voltage drop across this new resistor is VB, so we can determine the current through the left branch of our Wheatstone bridge. It'll be VB over R1 plus R3. Now that we have our current through the left branch, let's split our resistor apart again into R1 and R3. We know the current flowing through the left branch must flow through the resistor R3, so we know that the current through R3 is also equal to VB over R1 plus R3. To find the voltage between the two resistors, we just have to multiply this current by R3. This gives us that the voltage between the known resistors is VB R3 over R1 plus R3. Since we know R1 and R3, we can simply plug in the values for this voltage and call the result V left. We'll use this momentarily. Now we'll look at the right hand side. The symmetry of the Wheatstone bridge is very handy here because it means we can plug in the resistor values in the same locations from the formula earlier. From that, we can jump to V right equals VB RU over R2 plus RU. It's important to note that this depends on the voltmeter having an enormous resistance, but that is typical, and the correction factor is usually fairly small. Now that we have a formula for each voltage, we can solve for RU algebraically. The voltmeter gave us the difference between V left and V right. With that, we know that Vm, the voltage we read from the voltmeter, is equal to Vb times Ru over R2 plus Ru minus R3 over R1 plus R3. A few steps of algebra later, we get a formula for Ru. This is the value of our resistance measurement. We've also analyzed it symbolically, so we can just plug values into a formula in the future. Now that we know how to use our new device, we can test it out. We'll measure the resistance of a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Breadboards are the quintessential prototyping devices for circuits. The breadboard lets you make electrical connections quickly and easily. Each of the holes in the middle is connected across the row, except not across the divide in the middle. And the columns are connected all the way down. With this board, you can actually see the electrical connections on the back side. The rails on each side are typically power supply rails, while the rows in the middle allow you to connect components. The divide in the middle is sized to allow microchips to connect to a different row for every pin. We won't use any microchips here, but it's good to know the secrets of the breadboard. For this, We'll set up the resistors on opposite sides of the breadboard so that they don't make contact, and then we connect the battery. We'll measure the voltage across these two terminals here. And that gives us a reading of 2.4 volts. We can plug this into our formula, and that gives us a resistance of 10.04 kilo ohms, which is very close to the resistance denoted on the resistor. Now let's try measuring the current across a large resistor which should be inaccurate. We'll connect the terminals here and that'll give us a current of 1 milliamp which should give us a resistance of 9 kilo ohms which is much less accurate than the Wheatstone bridge measurement. Now that you've seen the Wheatstone Bridge in action, I hope you'll move forward in your work with circuits with a better understanding of how error can affect a system and how to address it. Thanks for watching!